Ever wondered how Pixar animates hair in films like Brave? Well, even if you didn't, this is how they did it. So I got most of the content from this video from Pixar in a Box, which is available on Khan Academy for free. It is really, really great, and I've been through the storytelling one as well as the hair one, obviously, so I definitely recommend them. So let's start off this process by bringing in real people to reference. So they examine the hair and they see how it moves and stuff, and they came to the conclusion with curly hair, such as the one in Brave, that it has to be soft, yet also stiff enough to keep the curls. So obviously everything is simulated, it would kind of drive the animators crazy and they wouldn't be able to release any films if they tried to do them all one by one. They simulate this all in something called tap. So when they're finished examining the hair, they bring in physical models of things and they see if they'll be able to reference those within animation. So they started off with string, although that would have been a bit too complex for them to work off of. And then they did paper clips and they tried to um, reference that within the animation, but that was a bit too kind of stiff. So they eventually started using virtual springs because they're nice and bouncy and they can also be joined together and made to look like hair pretty much. So they brought in lots of properties from springs such as displacement and the stiffness of springs and stuff like that. They use those all as points and they can change those properties to change the way in which the hair acts. And as well as having the properties of the springs, they also include things such as gravity. So obviously more gravity is going to pull the hair down further and it's not going to make it as bouncy and things like that. And wet hair is actually an example of when they'd use a higher gravity rate than the normal gravity on Earth. If you have wet hair, your hair kind of does droop down if you've got long hair. So by increasing the gravity, it makes the hair look wet or it makes it at least act wet and then they'll obviously make it look wet. Although just using springs for hair isn't really going to work well, it makes it go all crazy and stuff. So they use something called dampening, which basically means that if the hair is pulled down, it's not going to spring back up like higher than it was before. And it's going to go up close to the point where it started. So this just makes the hair look more natural. Obviously when your hair's bouncing down, it doesn't fly up again. And at this point, the curly hair isn't very curly, it's just straight pretty much. So to actually make it curly, they came up with this idea of using springs within springs. So these springs are called support springs and they basically, yeah, go in between different parts of the um, other springs and they make it curly, they make it curl around. And these springs can be manipulated separately to make the curls um, bigger or smaller and stuff like stiffness and all that can be changed too. Everything can be applied to the support springs that are applied to the normal springs. And how they do hair will differ for every type of hair type, really. I mean, you may be able to reuse some things for some types of hair, but for example, with Spots hair, they actually use something called geometric tubes. And these were first kind of shaped initially, and then there's kind of springs within these tubes, and they are the actual things that move, but they move kind of within their boundaries. And this was basically a way to have thick, unkept hair that was still manageable. But yeah, that's basically how the hair in films such as Brave, as well as Spots having good in The Good Dinosaur, are made. So it is going to be slightly different for different types of hair, but this is kind of the basis as to how they do it. They do basically bring in um, like properties such as gravity and things like that, and they use that to simulate the hair and make it act in the way that they want it to act. And yeah, it is pretty clever, and it saves somebody having to go and drag different parts of the hair literally for every frame of the video, or every two frames. But yeah, that's about it. Um, be sure to like this video, and be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one, as well as other videos saying how animation works and stuff like that. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.